we're going to write the complex numbers in Cartesian form, in exponential form, with the form r times e raised to the power of i theta. We also want theta to be in this interval here. So we want to find r, we want to find theta. And we can use these formulas here if needed. But many times, if we plot the point on the complex coordinate plane, we can find some of the information that we need. So let's go ahead and plot the number 2i on the complex coordinate plane. Because 2i is an imaginary number, it's going to be on the imaginary axis up two units. So the length of this segment here would be the radius, which would be two. And then angle theta, measured from the positive x-axis, would be pi over two radians. Which means 2i, written in exponential form, would be two times e raised to the power of i times pi over two, or pi over two i. Next we have three minus three i. Let's go ahead and plot this complex number. So positive three on the real axis, negative three on the imaginary axis. So this point here would be our complex number. The length of this segment here would be r. Let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangle for this one. We can label this leg positive three, label this leg negative three. Because both legs in this right triangle have a length of three units, we should recognize this as a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle, where the reference angle would be pi over four radians. This is helpful in two ways. First, we should recognize that angle theta, this angle here, would be two pi radians minus pi over four radians, or seven pi over four radians, so that's theta. Normally when we have a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle, we use the lengths of one, one, square root two. But notice how we multiply each side by three, we would have our reference triangle, which means the hypotenuse of this reference triangle, or r, is equal to three square root two. Again, we could use these formulas here, but if we recognize this, it'll save us some time. So three minus three i is equal to three square root two times e raised to the power of i times theta, or seven pi over four times i. Now let's take a look at our last example. We have negative four plus three i. So we'll mark off negative four on the real axis and positive three on the imaginary axis. So here's our complex number. This segment here would be r. Again, let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangle. This would be negative four, this would be positive three. Now in this example, we should recognize that this right triangle is a three, four, five right triangle, and therefore r equals five. If we didn't recognize this, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or this formula here, to determine r. So now we still have to find theta, which would be this angle here. Well, we know tangent theta must equal y divided by x. So in this case, we'd have tangent theta equals negative three-fourths. Therefore, theta is equal to arctangent of negative three-fourths. We're not going to find this trig function value on the unit circle or on our reference triangles, so we'll have to use the calculator to get a decimal approximation. But before we do this, recognize that our angle theta must be in the second quadrant. Let's make sure that we are in radian mode. We are. So we'll press second tangent negative three-fourths. Notice how the calculator is giving us the angle in the fourth quadrant, but that's okay because we can use this to find our angle theta. The calculator is giving us approximately negative 0.6435 for theta. That would be this angle here. which means our reference angle must be 0.6435 radians here. So we can find theta by taking pi radians, or half a rotation, and subtracting our reference angle. So theta is approximately pi minus 0.6435 radians.
So our theta is approximately 2.4981 radians. Now that we have r and theta, we can write the complex number in exponential form. It's going to be approximately 5 times e raised to the power of 2.4981 times i. Okay, hope you found these three examples helpful.